Science can be a lot of things. It can be really complex, but at its very core, science begins with one thing, asking a question. Through this video series, we're going to answer questions. Your questions. Me? Yes, you. So come with us behind the scenes where we'll be up close and personal with some amazing animals and the scientists working to save them at Smithsonian's National Zoo and Conservation Biology Institute. So get ready to dive in to another episode of Other Duties as Assigned, The Secret World of Zoo Jobs. What's one piece of advice you would give to someone looking to work in your field? I would say don't wear lip gloss or chew gum. You'll regret it. Hi, my name is Sarah Putman and I'm an endocrine research scientist and the resident poop sleuth here at the Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute. So what exactly does it mean to be a poop sleuth? My job is to investigate excrement. Think of me as a private investigator of poop, getting to the bottom of, well, what comes out of animal bottoms. I work in the endocrine lab, where we research the hormones of a variety of endangered species to find out things like if an animal's pregnant or how certain hormones change when an animal reaches puberty. And where can we find all of this wonderfully important information? You guessed it. Poop. So how does poking around with poop translate into important information for the people who work with animals? Come with me and I'll show you how it's done. The poop arrives frozen, each sample in its own individual bag and they're labeled with important information such as the animal's name, where it came from, and the date of the sample. We take all of those samples and we freeze dry them. Think of it like we're making beef jerky. We're pulling all of the water out of each of those samples. Once they're fully dry, we crush each one of those with a rubber mallet, and we take a small amount of that crushed sample, we weigh it out, and we add an alcohol solution to those samples. We then mix the samples using a vortexer. Think of it kind of like a small poop tornado where all of the fecal sample is moving around in the alcohol solution and that mixing action causes the hormones that we want to go from the poop into the alcohol solution. Once we've finished with that process, we centrifuge each of those samples to pull the fecal sample down to the bottom of the tube, and then we pour off the alcohol solution, which is where the hormones are, and then from there we can start our analysis of the hormones. We don't exclusively work with poop either. I've also processed hair, urine, and serum samples. I've even worked on samples collected from wild animals on every continent but Europe. Because I know you're curious, here are some fun fecal facts. The award for smelliest poop goes to cheetahs. Pretty much every other species I've worked with, I've been able to block the smell. This is not the case with cheetahs. The weirdest thing I found in poop was probably a piece of backbone we think from a rabbit we found in lion poop. Pygmy rabbit poop is probably the hardest poop I've ever had to crush. That's because they're coprophages, meaning they eat their poop. So they poop, they eat their poop, to regain some nutrients that they've lost, and then they poop it out again. It's really concentrated at that point. One cool discovery I've made while working in the endocrine lab was on a project with Panamanian golden frogs, working with Dr. Brian Gratwick and Janine Brown. We were wondering if we could get hormones from frog poop, and we totally could. And this species, if we had wanted to look at their hormones before this, we would have to get a blood sample or a urine sample. Collecting poop is a lot easier than getting a blood sample or waiting for the frog to pee. This makes life easier for the scientists doing the research and also for the frogs themselves because everybody poops. The reason why I recommend not chewing gum or wearing lip gloss in the lab is because poop dust happens. When we crush the samples and run them through the sieve, a dust cloud sometimes forms and it can get all up in your personal space, including in and around your face. Now that I've shared with you some of the highlights of being an endocrine research scientist and poop sleuth at the National Zoo, let's see if I can answer some of the questions you had about my job. Why did you choose this job? Well, I grew up on a farm and I knew I wanted to work with animals, but I'd had enough of domestic livestock. And I knew that I wanted to work in conservation and make a difference. I found an internship at the National Zoo and I haven't left. What's the smell like? Well. The smell of each species is unique. Like I said before, cheetah poop is awful. However, other species aren't so bad. Probably my favorite is the giant panda. 
their poop smells like tea. How much do you interact with the animals? I actually never interact with the animals. I get packages shipped to me from all over the world, but all I see is the poop. How does your work impact pregnant or baby animals? We get a lot of questions from zoos as to whether their animals are pregnant or not. So they can actually send us fecal samples throughout the beginning of the pregnancy or what they think is a pregnancy, and I can monitor their hormones and let the zoo know whether this animal is actually pregnant or if she's not. Thanks guys for spending a few minutes with me in the world of a poop sleuth. Magnum PU, off to solve the next animal mystery, one poop sample at a time. Do you love animals and being at the zoo, but you're not sure about a career in science? Our next episode is just for you. Tune in next time when we'll look into the future of the National Zoo and see some of the design that goes into planning exhibits. Like what you just watched? Share this video with your friends and submit questions for future programs in the comments. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time for another episode of Other Duties as Assigned, The Secret World of Zoo Jobs.